Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever it is that you are and wherever you may be. Thank you very much for making us a part of your day. I am Brad Franklin, creative content writer in Chesterfield. I'm very glad to tell you that Chesterfield Behind the Mic is on the air once again. Um, as we're going to be moving through the next few weeks and months, we're going to kind of work back in to a touch base with all the different Board of Supervisors members um, from the various districts and things like that. We thought we would start with uh, Kevin Carroll, who is the chairman of the Board of Supervisors. He's the chairman, actually, too, of the CVTA um, from the Matoka District. We will talk about all kinds of different stuff. Mr. Carroll, welcome back to the podcast, sir. How are you? I'm good. Glad to be here. Very glad to have you. Thank you very much for the time. Obviously, it's a um, uh, a big year for, for, for you as not only chairman of the Chesterfield County Board of Supervisors, as I mentioned, but also chairman of the uh, Central Virginia Transportation Authority. And we'll get into a little bit of all of that uh, during the course of the show. I guess the place I want to start is, is kind of countywide. Obviously, you know, as we record this today, it's February the 7th, um, you know, a little bit before the, the episode will drop. But the, the supervisors, you guys will be you know, starting that budget process. You know, the, um, the, the, there's a lot of work that obviously goes into that throughout the year. But especially here soon is when all the meetings and all the decisions have to get made. And I'm just curious as you get into kind of that, that, that process, obviously tax assessments are on a lot of people's minds. I'm just curious to get some of, sort of your point of view um, Sort of what do you what do, what are you what are your thoughts as you kind of get into this? What are some of those next steps for you guys as a, as a board? And certainly, um, what are your top priorities as budget season sort of starts to get going here soon? Well, that's a really loaded question. <laughs> so get you right out of the gate. Yeah. Well, you know, we know that uh, on an average, when you know, right now the information we've received from the assessor's office that average home values or property values in the county have increased on an average of about 8.8%. Right. Um, so when you look at an average like that, there are some people who are going to realize much bigger increases and there may be some that have gone down. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as we're looking at the budget, um, you know, we actually advertised a lower rate already than 92. Uh, last year we cut the budget by three cents from right. 95 to 92. And now we've advertised to 91. But that being said, even though we're reducing the rate, which is worth about five and a half million dollars a penny. Right when you have an 8.8% increase on average mm -hmm. and you cut the rate by a penny, it really reduces the increase about 7.8. So right. most taxpayers are going to see or an increase in what their assessments are. And those increases relate to a higher tax rate or higher taxes for them in their, in their real estate. So we're looking at all of that as we move forward in the budget process. And we have to weigh those increases quite frankly against a lot of things you know, we're also going to be looking at the tax rate on our personal property. Right. Um, and all of the different income sources that the county has in order to arrive at what our budget will finally be. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and we're just starting that process now. And the other thing that, you know, the school board has sent us a proposed budget. Right. But there's no line items. We haven't seen anything in in uh, detail yet. And right. so we really need to drill down into the details to see where we're going to fall. Um, I know that... Um, you know, the economic uh, I increases that are affecting everybody right. across the board, whether right. it's on, on groceries at the house or fuel at the pump. Um, one thing I would uh, want to express to the community is that those same increases are also affecting the county. Right. On our ability to provide services, um, you know, we've had um, increases in fuel cost mm -hmm. and energy cost um, across the board, um, but also our salary and compensation for our employees and trying to be able to retain and even hire and staff, right. whether it be public safety, mm -hmm. uh, fire police sheriff, or right. even our teachers and schools. So in, in terms of the, the, the big picture is the budget. And obviously there's a lot that goes into, you know, conversations about not just, you know, priorities inside of a budget, but priorities for tax rates. And uh, there's a lot of pressure that comes from the outside and, and certainly, as, as you guys hear from county staff, as you're working through this, you hear from, to your point about the school board, you know, it's um, requested budget, it's a proposed um, request. Um, in terms of the way that that impacts sort of the, the CIP and the bigger picture, obviously the bond referendum going through last year had to have been um, really um, comforting for, for, for the county as a whole, but especially for, for you guys as sort of the decision makers. Because it really was, I mean, it was overwhelmingly supported by voters and, you know, a real solid, you know, stamp of approval for, you know, the plans going forward. And I'm just curious to get your thoughts on, one, um, as you look back on that bond referendum, and two, how that sort of helped set the table 
for the county going into the CIP and um, sort of the, your budget uh, conversations going forward? Well, going back just quickly to the budget, we're still waiting to see what the state budget is right. going to look like, and right. that affects the school's budget. Um, and so we're going to have to look at all of that as it moves forward. And unfortunately, the state's budget takes more time. Right. And so we really end up getting those those numbers at the very end and have to work everything out. Mm-hmm. As far as the bond referendum goes, um, yeah, it was um, um, rewarding in some aspects that the community um, uh, voted over overwhelmingly to pass the bond referendum. But I also think that the community looked at what we were proposing and right. what the uses were and what we're proposing, whether it would be for schools right. or for public safety uh, or for parks and rec. And they, and they realized that these are actually needed upgrades. Right. You know, we need another high school in Western Matoka. We need another elementary school in Western Matoka. Right. We need another library. You know, we're in the process of building two middle schools um, that we we financed through a different way yeah. in the previous budget cycle. Right. And so I, I think that the community, based on uh, how we were able to get the message out, realized, okay, we know that Chessfield's experiencing a lot of growth, and we know because of that growth we need to find a way to put these things in place. And rather than having to jack taxes up through the roof, right. let's allow them to borrow this money, which actually helps us in the mm-hmm. long term with right. our bond rating, right. uh, to accomplish these goals. Um before we move to the district itself, I want to talk a little bit about sort of um, another sort of big picture item, which is economic development. Mm-hmm. Um, we had Garrett Hart on the podcast um, recently. We had Dr. Casey on the podcast talking about, you know, the, the year that was for 2022 for economic development in Chester County. Obviously, as you look back on it, it, it it's going to set the tone in a lot of ways for a, a, it, for an, a number of years out in the, you know, as, as Lego comes online, as Plenty mm-hmm. comes online, as all of these different um, uh, projects come online. I'm just curious to get your point of view as a member of the Board of Supervisors and, and now as chairman. Um, when you look back on 2022, what really stands out to you the most about what was achieved in, in the uh, economic development area? And then two, how, as you try to put your arms around, how big of a year was it really for the county? Well, I've been in Chester County for a long time. <laughs> uh, it, it was historic. Yeah. And that's a, uh, the one word that comes to mind i mean we know moving forward in the years outcoming that when those companies come up online and they start generating tax revenue in chesterfield county believe it or not those those monies are going to be needed yeah they're going to be needed because we know that based on the proposed increases in just the size of the schools that we right. had that's going to require additional revenue to pay for additional teachers right and the overhead associated with that so you know, when we start having the middle school come out of the ground in Western Hall Street and, and some of these other bond referendum projects, if Lego and Plenty and some of these other economic development companies that we've brought to Chessfield come out of the ground, right? the timing's going to be perfect to help us so we don't have to necessarily look at mm-hmm. jacking the tax rate up, maybe in some cases being able to adjust it and lower it in different ways. Right. Now, in terms of, let's talk a little bit about Matoka specifically. Obviously, um, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into all of the different pieces of the county puzzle that impacts every single district. And I think that as you look back on the the last year, since you were last on the podcast, there's been a lot of progress uh, throughout Matoka. And I'm just curious, what are some of the things that sort of big ticket items for you, things that kind of stand out as you, as you go out in the community and you talk to folks about some of the things that you've been able to um, see come out of the ground or projects that have been approved or things that are kind of in the pipeline. What kind of stands out to you as like some of the bigger uh, pieces of the puzzle in terms of meeting the needs that Matoka has? Well, if you look, we'll go back to some road projects for a minute. So when I got elected, we had a section of Otterdale Road when it rained yeah. heavily, it flooded. Mm-hmm. And when it flooded, people were trapped. We couldn't get public safety in there. And the board took measures a couple of years ago to restructure some debt and put that debt towards um, those projects to fix those roads. And since then, in the last uh, nine months, Horsepen Creek Mm -hmm. has been completely redone and fixed. came out really spectacular. Blackman Creek is in the process of being fixed now, and they're making great progress there. And then Otterdale Branch will be the last section of Otterdale Road, and that, that with the flooding effect, that'll be fixed. And they've actually already, already started clearing trees on that section to move into the next project. There was also what we knew an overcrowding issue with schools. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was no proposal on the on board to build a new middle school, right, or anywhere for right. that matter. 
And so we were able to move that project forward to get a pad site in place for a middle school. Now the bond referendum approval will give us the elementary school on site and a brand new library. Mm -hmm. And original plans were to just do a rebuild and enlarge Clover Hill Library. But the problem is we need to move those resources further west where the people are right. so that we don't have to bring as many people into that traffic area to try and use that one mm -hmm. resource. Right. We have to spread it out. Right. Um, and then there's another section out of the road, just talking about transportation from Woolridge to Hull Street. You know, that project had been approved but had not gone anywhere. We were able to negotiate a deal to move that forward. I mm -hmm. drove it the other day. It's spectacular. And it's really a lot safer for people to go through that area. Right. So from a from a transportation standpoint, we've made some progress. Uh, Winter Park Road is taking longer than I would like, but we're moving forward with that and getting right. that fixed. Right. So we've made some really great improvements in just in that section alone of right. of, of Matoka. But then we we you know Matoka's big. Right. Right. So it goes all the way from Ettrick, and so you know, we've had projects come out of the ground in Ettrick, mm -hmm. um, the new Ettrick uh, Elementary School, the Matoka Elementary School. The bond referendum is going to is approved an expansion of right. the Ettrick Matoka Library, um, so there's a, there's a lot going on. Yeah, and I, and I think too, if you look at it from the standpoint of as, as a supervisor, your job is multifaceted. You know, you have there's lots of different you know um, there there's lots of different um, concerns the citizens are going to have a lot of projects that they might uh, want you to look at, want the county to look at. And I'm just curious from your point of view now, having done this for a while, um, you know, and obviously as somebody who um, I, I think it's pretty easy to see that you enjoy the work, you enjoy the service, you enjoy what you do. Um, what's the what's the hardest part about balancing those pieces of the puzzle? You know, in terms of when you're hearing from the citizens, when you're going to different um, meetings, when you're considering different options for things, and considering how to vote on on certain um, things that come before the board. I'm just curious how do you how do you how would you speak to the the balance that you have to strike between um, all of the different pieces of that you know all the different um, parts of the, the puzzle that sort of have that investment in it. You know what I mean? The different, different folks might have different opinions. How do you sort of come to the place where you can make the decision that you think is best for Matoka as a whole? Well, first of all, the county is in the, is the business of service, no matter what it is, whether we're working with public safety, schools, libraries, parks and rec, we're in the business of service. So when people come forward with, with suggestions or questions or needs, then we want to see if we can meet those needs. Right can't always do everything at one time because it's all about money as well. Right. Um, so, you know, for instance, uh, you know, if someone pointed out to me a couple of weeks ago that the flagpole at Manchester softball field looks like a big rusty metal spike coming out of the ground, no flag on it. Right. Need a replacement. I can't fix problems that I don't know about. Right. I bring the problem forward. We give it to parks and rec. Now they have a brand new flagpole. Right. With a brand new flag on it that the, that, uh, that is, those little details, right. no matter what they are, are right. important because right. they're all a reflection of, of what we're trying to do. You know, Manchester High School, um, they have a, a vehicle that they use to drag the fields. It's got a blown motor in it. No one from the school came to me. It was com community members right. came to me right. and said, hey, I had to use my four-wheeler last year to fix this because this one's blown. Right. So now we're working on getting them a new gator. Um, you look at Cosby High School, the, the, the tennis courts were in – terrible shape and, right and it wasn't on the capital improvement plan for the schools right it's a hundred thousand dollars right. luckily we kept some arpa funds and not arpa funds but some surplus funds available to try and deal with some of these issues right um and so you know you have to weigh all of these things especially if you're looking at, at whether or not a development that's being proposed you know the hard side about that is on one hand People have a right to, to of personal property rights. Right, the right. individual that actually owns the property who says, this is a big investment for my family, right. and I want to try and move it forward to, to try and um, make some money off of this right. to provide for my family. And then the other side is, well, what are you going to put out there, and how is it going to affect everybody else? Right. And and so what's the balance? Right. And then if it is going to be a, a residential, then how? what's the time frame on it coming out of the ground? Mm -hmm. Will it time up with the resources that we're trying to put in place like additional schools, like road improvements, right? So that when you put additional capacity, not just for schools but for roads, the actual roads can handle it, and the schools can handle it, right? And so in some cases, you may have to look at, it and, and we've done it in one particular zoning case where we said you have to phase this in over extended period of time, right? So that as you come out of the ground, it meets 
our ability to meet the need. Right. Now, in terms of, you know, another thing that, that really does impact stakeholders and, you know, residents is obviously affordable housing. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's certainly a concern, I think, for the board has been, will continue to be, especially as, as you guys go forward. Um, Etric Landing is a really interesting idea uh, and a really interesting project. Um, I'm curious, what do you think that could mean? Um, what kind of example do you think that that could set for the county as a whole, but especially for Matoka? What do you, how big of a deal do you feel like Etric Landing is for the county? Well, first of all, it's the first of its kind in the United States. Right. So it is a pretty progressive idea. Yeah. Um, I can't wait for the houses to come out of the ground and people from our community to be able to move into those houses. But it is a unique idea, and the fact that the land is actually owned by the Maggie Walker Land Trust, and right. the house is actually owned by who buys it. And if they sell it later on, half of the profits will go to Maggie Walker and half of the profits will go to the, the, the property owner. Um, but a lot of that is subsidized by grants mm-hmm. in order to keep the housing costs down. Right. And so I want to see how it comes out of the ground, what the housing, the houses look like. I know recently we had a meeting to discuss what the houses will be with the residents of the concerned sense of Ettrick. And it looks like we're going to do 10 single story houses now, as opposed right. to seven multi-story and three single story. Um, but, you know, depending on how that project works, then it gives us an idea of what we may be able to do to partner with other um, organizations to, to see where that goes and, mm-hmm. and see if we can do other projects like that. Yeah. One more thing on the district side before we switch over to um, um, the CVTA. Um, I felt like I went to a lot of different groundbreakings in last year, in the last you know six, eight months. A lot of stuff happening in, in Matoka. Um, I feel like every time I turned around, he were giving a speech somewhere. Um, you know, and I'm just, uh, as I look back on it, and I just was thinking uh, here as you were kind of talking about, you know, exciting to see things coming out of the ground. Um, there's a lot, obviously, to be excited about in Matoka. Um, and I'm just curious to get sort of your point of view on how rewarding it is to see some of those things really come into fruition, things you've worked on, things you know that have you know been in the pipeline for a long time to see you know actual real results. I'm just curious what that what that process is like for you as, as somebody involved in it. Well, it's important for us to do these groundbreaking ceremonies uh, and these ribbon cuttings. Yeah. Um, we did a groundbreaking ceremony at Company 8. Uh, the new company eight that's being built on Hickory Road. It's the first time the fire department's ever done a groundbreaking ceremony for a, a new fire department, huh, which I, I thought that. was odd. Yeah, because we've built a bunch of them. Um, but so it's important to have that groundbreaking ceremony and get the community involved so they yeah. can see, hey, it's coming. Yeah, and then after it's in place, like we did with Company Twenty Five up on Ottadale Road and Company Five up on Melothian then have a dedication of, of an opening so the people can come in and say, okay, this is what your tax dollars actually paid for. Right. These are the people who work for you. You need to come and see it. Right. Um, and it's better to see it now than if you have to dial 911 and Absolutely. wait for it to show up because yeah. you're going to be in no condition to look at it. Then. Yeah, that's right. So it, it is rewarding to, to see these things come out of the ground and know that, that the services that, like I said, it's a service business. So yep. the services we're supposed to provide are being upgraded so we can provide the best service. Move in company eight where we did puts it more centralized in that district of response. Mm-hmm. And so it actually cuts response times to half the district than it did before. Right. Um, so it's, yeah, it's great to see these things come out of the ground and we got more to come. Yep. Uh, there's, you know, with the bond referendum, you know, company 12, will get an upgrade uh, that'll be built right next to the new Ettrick elementary school. We're working on a pocket park out in front of elementary school. That'll, um, that'll kind of, come online in conjunction with what Virginia State University is doing with Summer Seat, which is a, a park project that they're doing on um, their side of the road. Right. And so, um, you know, we're working on that park project. It was part of what was proposed when um, when Ettrick Elementary was built. So there's a lot going on. Absolutely. Now, speaking of tax dollars, uh, yeah, I, I know that the last time you were on the podcast, we were, you had Mr. Thornton were both here to talk about the CVTA and talk about some of the things that were kind of going on with that group of things, you know, projects you guys were considering in the way that that whole structure worked. Now here we are, I want to say what, six ish, seven months later. Mm-hmm. And I'm just curious to, to touch base on that. Obviously now as chairman of, of that group as well, there's a lot that, that goes into scoring these projects that the CVTA considers. I know that's a, um, you know, that's something you guys are trying to get your hands around in terms of making sure that the things that are getting funded are the things that should be funded you know, that it's not just one metric that makes that decision. There's a lot that goes into that. I'm just curious to get some of your thoughts on um, how things are going for the CVTA, what kind of stands out to you, and what what kind of um, um, impact you feel that that's having and will have on Chesterfield County. 
Well, we just went through the smart scale process with the, with the package that we passed, mm-hmm. uh, two hundred seventy six million dollars back in uh, April May. Right. Uh, we're in the process of analyzing how those projects did. Some of them didn't score as well as we would have hoped. Okay. Some of it had to do with um, some underestimating on actual costs. Okay. So when VDOT came in and looked at the cost and actually estimated higher, then it would have required more money to be put up front uh, in order to score well from a from a, uh, a dollar and cents purpose. Makes sense, right? You know, the average project in the Commonwealth of Virginia, I think if it costs less than $10 million dollars, to do got funded and anything that was more than that didn't score well some of the projects that we we put forward um, we have to look at you know how we're actually submitting them in the process right so all of that's coming up in our upcoming meetings but going back to what we've done in the past two things that were of significance one the funding of the fall line trail which is going to directly impact Chesterfield county because absolutely the second leg being funded in the southern section which is coming up from down behind Virginia State University in Campbell's Bridge, north, heading towards Route 1. Okay. And then the first leg coming from Ashland south through Hanover and eventually tying in uh, in the middle somewhere. Uh, and that's additional funding we have to work on down the road. But one of the significant projects was the 64 widening project. Right. The first time that was submitted uh, years ago, it, f- it scored very poorly in smart scale. This time it scored very well and actually got com- completely funded for a couple of reasons. One... The General Assembly allocated $470 million towards that project. The state, the federal government actually granted $25 million towards the project. And the CVTA awarded $100 million towards the project. And so when you looked at the factors on how they were going to score that, and then the fact that the CTB and the Commonwealth Transportation Board actually carried it as a smart sale project, they ended up funding it with, I think, an additional $160 million. So now... 64 is going to be widened from Richmond to James City County. Okay. And it'll match what the road is as you go further east on 64. So the CVTA has been in, involved in, in a lot of things um, regionally, and we're going to continue to do that. Good deal. All right, last one, and I'll get you out of here on this. Um, chairman of the Board of Supervisors, Chairman of CVTA, a lot going on in Matoka. I'm, I'm, going to open, I'm going to ask this question. You can take it any direction you want, but I... I it's a, obviously a Uh-oh. lot of <laughs> a lot of 2023 ahead for all of us, right? So I'm just curious, what kind of things are kind of on your horizon? They're on your radar as as, as things move forward. What are some of the things that uh, that you sort of um, you'll be focused on as we go through the rest of 2023 and beyond? Well, I mean, certainly we have the budget coming up, and that's going to be one of right. our, our main focuses over the next couple of months. But really, it's about meeting the needs of the community. Uh, and so, you know, sometimes people call you up with just with the, with with an ask that some people don't think is that important, but it really right. is. It's right. important to them, right? Uh, and so, when those things come in, and you can make an immediate impact to, uh, on that, um, then you try and do that. You know, we have a lot of community conversations coming up. Right. We have uh, some public hearings coming up on uh, the budget, and we have some public community conversations coming up. I actually have one this afternoon at two o'clock down at the Etchcombe Token Library. And so really just getting out and talking with people and finding out where they're at and getting their thoughts on things and, and, and informing them about what we're doing here in the county. Um, because I think a lot of um, uh, people really don't um, get the information they need to know exactly what, right. what we're doing. Right. Well, Mr. Carroll, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast again. I think this is your third time. Um, I think Matt Harris is one ahead of you at this point, so you get some catching up to do. But really appreciate you coming on and giving us some of your time today. We really appreciate it. Well, any time I get an opportunity to get information out to the community is, is important, so I appreciate the opportunity to be on here. Now, make sure to check us out on social media. On Twitter, it's at Chesterfield VA, and on Instagram, it's Chesterfield Virginia, all one word. And on Facebook, you can check out our podcast page. Just search Chesterfield behind the mic. Make sure to like that page so you can keep up with you go forward. Now, let me tell you about all the ways you can check us out. You can watch us on our YouTube channel as well as on our website, chesterfield.gov slash podcast. An audio-only version of the show is available there, as well as on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Overcast, and a whole host of other services. You can watch the podcast on WCCT Thursday through Sunday at 7 on the weekends at noon. That's Comcast Channel 98 and Verizon Channel 28. And lastly, you can check out chesterfield.gov slash connect with us for more ways for you to get in touch with us and us to get in touch with you. My thanks to our director, Martin Stiff, our executive producer, Teresa Boniface, and all the good folks here from Communications Media for making this happen. My thanks to you for joining us today. So, from all of us here in Chesterfield County, thank you very much for making us part of your day. We'll see you again real soon. Take good care.